that's all I've got for now. Let's see if there are any connections. Have I assigned all the tasks properly? So, what do I have to deal with this week? Someone place an order. The deal isn't great, but it's a chance for some extra cash. Congratulations, you've just got yourself a raise. You're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. Finally, Oliver. You are ten minutes late. I'm waiting for a good excuse. Neither will be good enough for you, Mortonese. I know how precious your time is, so I'm sorry, and let's get straight to the point. On behalf of our entire crew, thank you for this invitation. Perhaps you know that we're also a family business. The Kersey Brothers founded it out of a passion for coffee. It's this passion that I want to share with you today. You talk nicely about the curse eyes, and I have a sentiment to family business. I started like that myself. This is the reason why I invited you. What exactly can you offer me? The Kersey family sends their regards. We're very happy that you've become our client. After the head of the house dies, it's not easy to keep this business in check. Familia is the most important thing, and the loss of its member is a real tragedy. I know something about it. I'll visit the Cursais at the earliest opportunity, and if I find out about the circumstances of Richard's death, you will also be informed. It's always good to know who you're doing business with, so I'll briefly introduce our values before the offer, okay? Shortly, you are welcome. Together with the Curseys, we focus on honesty and high quality. They don't always pay off, but thanks to them, we can easily look in the mirror. What brings me to you, mister? Working with us means predictability in the best sense of the word. Bella, bella. A very nice declaration, Oliver. Reality will verify it quickly. My offer takes into account the interests of both parties. 
We'll provide you with excellent grain, punctual deliveries, and flexible after-sale service. In return, we expect a payment adequate to the quality of our product and services. Now that's what I'm talking about, Oliver. You protect our profito, and we protect you. Short and to the point. Hold on to it, and you'll go far with us. As for the payment, we'll come back to it later. Let's move on to the product overview. Brillante Mint, great. I was waiting for it. At the beginning, I wanted to suggest a classic, but everyone has the classic. So I propose something bolder and with character. Like... Please go. It's a whole new type of coffee, practically com... Testing? Sorry, Mr. Mortonese, I understand. You are catching on, Oliver. Tricks are good and... Ciao. Welcome to my casa, Mr. Oliver. I'll immediately reveal the purpose of our meeting. I want to buy your company. I would say the price doesn't matter, but I like talking too much. So, let's talk. Should I sell the company? Well, Mr. Mortonese, I'm impressed. I hadn't planned it, but such momentum can make you think. That's it, Mr. Oliver. You have achieved a certain success, but you lack experience and imagination, a special imaginazione to operate on a larger scale. I don't want to offend you. I'm just stating the fact. It's time to think about development, about change. They will be very beneficial for you. Coffee does sell, but that's my merit. Let me tell you that since the tragic case with Richard, Henry and Clarabelle can't keep up with managing business. Believe me, you do not want to buy the company as it is. Can we come back to this conversation in a while? We can, but what for? Of course, you know that this information reduces the value of your company, but it's nothing. I can make you into millionario anyway. Besides, Kersey was a terrible boss. Do you prefer to wait for the anchor? or start a brand new engine. Okay, I'll bring it up with Henry. He has the last word. It'll be easier to convince him by showing the coffee contract with your signature. What do you say? This is possible. But first I'll ask you about contracts with uh, Tom Marvy. He's lost a lot lately. The poor man had to be determined to finally gain something, right? Mr. Marvy wanted to increase the sales of the network and he had an idea for it. If you know each other, then you know how difficult it is to change his decision. Fortunately, the profit promise was more important to him than the company's philosophy. Speaking of losses, is it rivaling with Sorote? You found yourself in the business quickly, Oliver. Van Haven, McFall, Gamalkvist, Marvi, Kobayashi, 
These are solid uh, contrains. I am especially interested in the latter, Mrs. Kobayashi. It's been a long time since we talked. How well is she? In business, rather good. Miss Kobayashi is open to news. Of course, this openness has to be bought first, and to be honest, I probably overpaid a bit, because she's a tough one. Oh no, she's too smart. And Gabriel Cáceres? You met him too, right? He pretends to be crazy, lunatico, but he's the best contractor from the whole London gang. Except for me. As the best one, I only ask for a symbolic coffee discount. This discount will be enough. Gabriel? He's a piece of work. <laughs> Seems nuts, but he's really a very smart and honest guy. Getting back to business, I came to you with a certain discount limit, but I like you, and I'll gladly agree to this discount. A rather modesto gift, but so be it, Oliver. I'll make you a bigger one later from your entire company. Now go to work. Sum up what happened after that meeting. I expected that I wouldn't get much out of a typical conversation with Francesco. Luckily, Reeves had done a sterling job as a mole. According to his pals, Francesco was often seen in one of the remaining exclusive coffee and inhaling clubs in Neo-London. I found the inhaling club easily enough, 
It had a distinctive mural and bouncers at the entrance. Now all I had to do was to stuff my wallet full of cash and muster up a lot of patience. After a few days wandering around the area, bingo, the mafioso must have been longing for a high. I waited half an hour, and off I went. Half my readies vanished just in getting in. Great. I looked around. Where would Francesco choose? The VIP room or the main room close to the entrance? I asked one of the coffee and dealers about him. Up the stairs to the top, sir. At the top of the greasy pole, of course. My wallet was already empty. I gave the dealer a big tip and ordered an extra portion for Francesco. I told the dealer to say it was a present from my company. He was easy to find. He was smoking some kind of scented mix. The whole floor smelled of it. What kind of stink was Morton Knees trying to hide with it? There were bouncers on the door, but Morton Knees spotted me out of the corner of his eye and languidly waved a hand in my direction, so they let me in. I took one last breath of sobriety and stepped over the line of common sense. Francesco had been smoking and was a little high. Good. I sat down, took a drag to be sociable, and let him know that I was running my firm at Clarabelle's behest. Francesco's head cleared momentarily. That little fox, she played the innocence brilliantly. In business, Mr. Mortonese? In that too. So he knew her. Seeing that, I decided to ask directly. Were you and her an item? Yes. Though, it was only interesting to be with. Francesco briefly wept Clarabelle. How did it begin? From the media buzz about Claribel's cake. I want to take advantage, but it was lacking the key component. The crazy soon wore off. Claribel, she dream of a comeback. From pages. I let him on. Is that why she's meeting Baptiste? No. That stupid dog can even handle a laptop, let alone a woman. The great detective. His info about paintings was false. We were just wasting our time. Paintings? You mean the Cursey's planters? I mean the copies hanging in the museum. We were all interested in the authentic, the originals. It turned out a central one. Richard had it the whole time. It turned out the central one. Richard had it the whole time. We were supposed to receive the painting for paying off his debt to Alver. And it was a big one, a grande debito, even for a cursey. The coffee was great. Why was it so long since I last had some? I reminded myself because it was so good, 
and on top of that, officially speaking, it was illegal and bloody expensive. So the whole time it was about the painting? Did you get it in the end? Richard is a clown. He turned down our help and lent his friend Van Haven in the deep stuff. They found the painting at his place. Old Joseph is soft. He soon came clean that the painting had gone back to the familia. Harry had it. We went looking for him, but the bastardo disappeared. I, I could feel the coughing taking effect more and more. And what about uh, Joseph? Oh, oh, he's fine. When she heard about her uncle being kidnapped, Claribel went crazy. We let him go and even gave him a bodyguard. For a woman like that, you do everything. Mortonese expanded on the topic of his own accord. He was mumbling somewhat incoherently, because we were both high as kites. Those paintings are trouble. That curator. He was a swindler, too. Waste of time. He was supposed to be helping, but I could tell. I knew this analysis was taking way too long. We let Hitomi play us like Bambini. Harold, he delay us, cheat us. And then the damn Yakuza try to get him off us. So much dishonor over an old fool. And the paintings? Where a grande false. Francesco finally drifted off. About time. I needed some fresh air. I don't recall how I made it back to the office. The phone was ringing as if through a thick fog. It was Jacob Reeves. Oliver, we've got a right old mess here. Kobayashi and Ketermol are dead. It looks as if Harold shot the little lady, then blew his own head off. Dead? And we'd only just been talking. I started laughing. It must have been the coffee. Must have been. <laughs> How did I let myself get dragged into all this? Wasn't all the pain over Kate enough, so I had to come back to Neo London for more? Maybe I should ask for the next bullet. This time, the one that hits the bullseye. Damn, curses. I need to check the investigation board. Set the new clues and data on the board.
is a good lead, but the information may possibly be right. Hi. What's the rush? Something up? Oh, at last, you're here. It, it, it's Clarabelle. They, they've taken her. What? Who? I don't know. They, they rang only a moment ago. I, I called you right away. I, I did the right thing, didn't I? Did they say what they wanted? The same thing as all those leeches hassling the curses, the bloody painting, all these problems because of that canvas rag. Ah, uh, yes, of course. You told them it had been stolen, right? Hmm, well, you see, Arthur, it's not that simple. What does that mean? Get to the point, lad. We have to rescue Clarabelle. Even if she's tangled in this case deeper than she reveals, I don't think we could risk her life by doubting it's a real kidnapping. Oh, dear. The auction house. What are we doing here? Don't tell me you're spending company cash on trinkets. Not at all. I, I just happened to be passing. A guy pushed me into a phone booth and told me to pick up the receiver. It was... it was horrible. You've got the painting, haven't you? No, I, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. So who does? I don't know. I don't know. Hold on. Joseph gave it to you, right? To look after. Yes. His wife was afraid to keep the planters at home. You know, thieves, blackmailers. My God. Henry, really? Uh, no, thanks. I'm all right. You know, maybe it doesn't look that way, but I'm pretty tough. Joseph knew. He asked, he asked me to be discreet. Nobody was to know the painting was in my hands. Uh-huh. And you hid it in the tenement, right? Oh, that tenement. The, the rats, the lodgers, art thieves. I, I couldn't live like that. Okay, Henry. Let's get one thing clear. You're paying me, I know, but if you don't stop BSing me, I'll arrange a night in the cells for you. Are you... are you mad, Oliver? What for? I'm the victim here. Two reasons. First, nobody can kidnap you from there. Second, listening to you, I can see a clear case of obstructing an officer and performing his duty. You know how that's going to look in court. All right, then, filthy detective. What do you want to know? What happened to the painting? <sighs> okay. I, I had some gambling debts. The cards were against me. And the picture was valuable. I knew Joseph didn't want it back. I mean, what for? You sold it? Yes. When? And to whom? Just before you came. I, I don't know the buyer, a mysterious collector. Anyway, it's over, Arthur. I've, I've had enough troubles with that filthy painting. You're right it's over. For Catherine, for Richard, Coralie, Hitomi, and Harold. And now it's over for Clarabelle too, eh? Don't say that. You want me to feel guilty? I I already do. I knew Richard wasn't dead. They kidnapped him to get the painting. Yes, I admit it. At first, I might have told you a, a small lie. Small? I ran your business while you played cards. I made a fool of myself in front of real business people. You wasted my time and now your niece might die? I should just punch you in the face. Please, no. I despise violence. Despise is a good word. We'll come back to that. 
Now we need to deal with the latest kidnapping. Or is there something else you want to tell me? Yes, I'm glad you asked. I, ha I have an idea how we can help Clarabelle. Well? I don't know who has the painting, but we can work out who's going to have it. In a week's time, someone's putting the planters up for auction. Right there. We can take all the company's profits, buy the painting, and rescue Clarabelle. Coincidence? Does it matter? It's a chance. Call the kidnappers and ask them to give us a week. Unbelievable. What? Thinking that up? No, it's, it's nothing. You'd have thought of it eventually. No. What's unbelievable is all the crap you told me about the investigation into Catherine. You deliberately dragged me into that quagmire. You put your own family at risk. And now you want to squander all the money I've earned to pay off your own guilt. You're right. You're right. But, you know, I acted in good faith. I, I wanted to find Rich. And, well, it's the only way out now, isn't it? You owe me, Henry. Big time. When it's all over, I want to get everything I earn for you. I don't care where you get it from, the bank or Alver. I get the cash or the whole story goes to the press. In detail. Get it? Uh, now you're showing your true colors, Arthur. Clarabelle might have believed you, but I didn't. I knew from the start you were only after the cursy cash. Unlike you, I worked for it. You're a leech like the rest of them. Do I have a choice? You had plenty, Henry, and you always made the wrong one. And now we have to go and rescue Clarabelle, unless she's actually in cahoots with the blackmailers. Give it a rest, Arthur. Don't even joke about it. Need to check the investigation board. I think these are all the connections. I still need to move the investigation further and get more clues. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to welcome you to the auction of this wonderful painting, serving as the middle part of the Planter's Triptych from Kersey's family collection. Without further ado, I present the asking price. I'm going in for the asking price. Hey, Reese. Going once. I'll give you more. Not so fast. We start with high C, going once. Now me. I raise the bet. The amount raised by Mr. Oliver, going one. 
Please forgive me, but I... I think we'll finish this show soon. Then think again. Adi's man, rough as ever. Let me join you. Let me think. I'll give you more. Mr. Oliver raises again. The stake goes up. Let's not prolong this. Ladies and gentlemen, you must understand that I'll come out from here today together with this painting. I'm starting to like it. I'll give more. I was expecting a better level of this whole endeavor. I'm joining! You don't even let me say my part. Going once. Really, it's like watching monkeys in a circus. Let me think. So be it. Things taking an exciting turn, and Mr. Oliver conquers again. Who gives more? Not so fast! Ladies and gentlemen, with... Ladies, going twice. I didn't... How long? Let it be. Lady... Have mercy... I do... Going one. Well. This is a misunder... This is... It's time to end. I raise the bet. Ridiculous. My dear friends, the bar has already been raised under the ceiling. Will anyone here be able to beat Mr. Oliver? I had fun, but it's time to let go. Going once. Maybe next time. I had better things to do anyway. Going twice. I think we're getting close to the final. I better go get some air. And sold. The painting goes to the Honorable Mr. Oliver. Congratulations to the buyer, and thank you all for participating in the auction of this magnificent work. Let's go back home. Well, it's time for me, too. Need to check the investigation report. I think these are all the connections. I still need to move the investigation further and get more clues. Should I move the investigation forward or wait and make some more ca- have I assigned all the tasks properly? Should I have I assigned all the tasks properly? Investigation forward or wait and make some more cash instead. So, what's going on in this game? I think these are all the connections. I still need to move. Investigation further and get more clues.
Should I move the environment? Have I assigned all the tasks properly? Another report. I hope there's some good news. are all the connections. I still need to move the investigation further and get more clues. Should I move the invest have I assigned all the tasks properly? Should I move the invest have I assigned all the tasks properly? So, what do I have to deal with this week? Should I have I assigned all the tasks properly? Should I have I assigned all the tasks properly? So, what do I have to deal with this week? I've arrived at the appointed place, abandoned warehouse near the Thames, away from the noise and casual witnesses. I didn't hesitate any longer and walked into the warehouse indicated by the blackmailers. The sight of Francesco Mortonese and Jordan Alver wasn't a big shock for me. What surprised me was the unemotional face of Clarabelle, hidden behind one of the pillars on the other side of the warehouse. Maybe she was just scared. Hello, Oliver. Maybe you'll finally be of some use. A third voice emerged from behind. Can no cursing man take some effort of getting things done? but instead use women, or private detectives. Suddenly I understood. It's George McFowl's voice. It sounded completely different than the one belonging to a nice and talkative businessman. However, I have heard it once more in my life. Then, at the docks by the Thames. Give back the paintings! And let's finish this case. We waited long enough for this. Suddenly, everything happened rapidly. They all aimed at me. There was no more time for any reflections and diplomacy, and they outnumbered me. I had to take a risk. Second shot? I could have sworn he didn't have time to fire his gun. Cat, are you all right? All good? Yes, Arthur. I've never felt better. Thank goodness. I was so scared that I would lose you that one of those bullets would stray towards you. I was never threatened, Arthur. What are you talking about? 
You must be in shock. The most important thing is that you're okay, darling. I wish my mother could hear the same from you ten years ago. Poor Arthur. Do you think I'm her? You still don't remember what really happened. I closed my eyes and quickly opened them again. Then I realized that I was not at the docks by the Thames and I was not talking to you, my beloved cat. You haven't changed the color of your hair. No one has washed the blood off your face or your jacket. The same eyes were staring at me, but instead of a hint of curiosity and reckless joy which I adored so much, I met a piercing and cold gaze. Your ever soft lips were now pressed in a gloating evil grin. You pretend to be tough, and in return for a nice smile and a warm touch, you will do what we want, right? You, Francesco, my dad, Gabriel, Baptiste, even Tom. Mum knew it too. She was manipulating you, Arthur. Until today, you don't even know how and when, do you? Believe me, she wasn't such a saint after all. Father wasn't as bad either, at least to her, but he was a swine to me. He said I wasn't his daughter. Instead, he let Uncle Joseph raise me, a person who loves me like her own child. But they both got what they deserved, and so did I. I don't understand, Clarabelle. Richard's dead and Joseph nearly died. It was a mafia score, not some twisted karma. Do you think that such an important matter as getting the coffee noir genome would be in the hands of blind fate? Wake up at last. I closed my eyes again and opened them from painful amazement. I also understood something again. She needed us all. The role of Francesco, her lover, was to make Richard reveal where the last of the triptych paintings was. Richard died because he knew only that he gave the painting to Joseph, and the ever-loyal Joseph wouldn't tell Mafia that he passed it on to Henry under the pressure of his wife Amanda. Finally, Henry lost this precious heirloom due to gambling. Thus, the painting was lost from Clarabelle's sight. We all succumbed to it. Baptiste found Gabriel in Guyana and brought him back to London, who in turn gave her two parts of the genome. Tom promised to help with starting the production of legendary Coffee Noir. Joseph survived because he raised the Viper, and the Viper showed him mercy. And me? Why did she need me? What about Henry? He was helping you? Is that why he called me? Ah, uh, Uncle Henry. He wasn't good for anything. All he could do was getting drunk and losing money. Thanks to him, I found out about your fascination with my mother. Father hadn't shared with him any information about the genome, nor the real meaning of the paintings, which is why that old fool lost such a precious treasure. But why me? I needed a dog that would grab the bone and won't let it go till the end. A dog that, driven by a desire for revenge and an illusory sense of justice, can be trained. You are perfect. Why are you telling me this? Because you did your job. Although, I have to admit that I doubted your abilities at one moment. Poor Gabriel, who turned out to be a really good actor, had to lead you by the hand like a child in the fog. And what do you expect from me? Praise. Work for me, Arthur. I have ambitious plans, and around me there are some... vacancies. Never, Clarabelle. I loved your mother. I was mad with despair when she died. I saw the same angelic good in you as in her. Now I see that I couldn't have been more wrong. I'm exactly like her, but you still err, Arthur. I don't need you then. I've recreated this moment in my head many times. The overwhelming certainty that the world is about to end. Everything was going fast. Too fast. As if the future had to be defined in that instant moment. With the noise of gunfire, the screams of approaching enemies, and the ever louder staccato of a running woman's heels. Kate... 
The closest bastard had hatred painted over his face. At least it seemed so, but in fact everyone who was pointing at me was wearing masks. I shot, several times to be sure. The clatter of the heels suddenly stopped. Kate was lying in a pool of blood, and with each breath becoming shallower, the life had been draining out of her. I heard the sound of a body falling. My body. The coolness of the ground, the blackness before my eyes, just like the day of my greatest crime, lying next to you. As promised, I found your killer cat. Case closed.